Thank you so much. You know, it's wonderful to be here in Lisbon and at Web Summit. I'm excited to be representing Waymo, our year-old self-driving technology company that began as a Google project back in 2009. You know, last year, I had the opportunity to take my dear old mom, she's 98 years old, for a ride in one of our self-driving cars. It was her first ride, of course. She'd be the first to tell you that she's not your typical 98-year-old. She lives an incredibly active lifestyle. She walks two kilometers a day, and she's always up and about, seeing friends, going shopping, that sort of thing. But several years ago, she made the difficult decision that we all have to make one day. She gave up her driver's license. Now, for so many people, giving up the keys to your car means losing the freedom to go the places you want to go, whenever, wherever. And self-driving cars have the potential to change that. Now, unlike most people in this room, my mother is not what you'd consider an early tech adopter. She's only just started using her first smartphone, no kidding. And while I'm impressed with her gallant attempts, I still have trouble reading her texts. But watching her get comfortable with our self-driving car so quickly proved to me in a very personal way how so many lives could be transformed with this technology. The reality is everyone, everywhere, stands to benefit from self-driving technology. More than that, when you consider the state of driving today, it's also clear that our roads need to be safer. It's sort of crazy. Worldwide, 1.25 million people die annually on our roadways. That's the equivalent of a 737 falling out of the sky every hour of every day. And as many as 50 million people are injured in crashes every year, many incurring permanent disabilities as a result. That's why Waymo stands for a new way forward in mobility. We have a mission to make it safe and easy for people and things to move around. We're committed to building what we call fully self-driving technology. And we like to say at Waymo, we're not building a better car. We're building a better driver. Now, unlike driver assist systems, which require you to monitor the road at all times and take over driving if the car can't handle a situation, Waymo will be the driver from the beginning to the end. You won't be asked to take over. And no one is required to be at the wheel. In fact, there doesn't need to be a person sitting in the driver's seat at all. So why do we think fully self-driving technology is the best option? Well, I'll tell you, we, we tested partially autonomous cars a couple of years ago. In our team's earlier years, while we were still Google, we gave our employees a car that would take over the boring parts of driving, for example, on highways. But if something beyond its ability occurred, the employee would have to take over immediately. Now, what we saw was our testers putting too much trust in that technology. They were doing things that made it clear they would not be ready to take over driving if the vehicle asked them to. Let's have a look. This first guy seems to be doing some texting. There's another fellow who's insisting that he needs to get some charge in his cell phone. Or maybe it's charge in his laptop. This woman thought it essential and imperative to put makeup on during the rush hour. Not a best practice. But what really pushed us over the line was this last video. It's a little hard to see here, but this last guy was so out of the loop that he actually fell asleep at about 100 kilometers per hour down the expressway in the morning. Sort of scary, right? That's why we believe nothing short of full autonomy will do. And it makes sense. Consider, 94% of crashes in the US involve human error. And we want to create a driver that never gets drunk, that never gets tired, and that never gets distracted. That's why our goal is to build the world's most experienced driver who can take anyone or anything safely from point A to point B. So how far off is this future when cars can drive without anyone at the wheel? 
Well, we've been working on this technology a long time, for about eight years. And every company, including Waymo, has always started with a test driver behind the wheel ready to, to take over. And we recently surveyed 3,000 adults across the US, asking them when they expected to see self-driving vehicles, ones without a person in the driver's seat on their own roads. And the most common answer we heard was around 2020. Well, we have some exciting news to share with the world right here at Web Summit. Right now, we're going to show you a video of Waymo's fully self-driving cars on public roads test driving without anyone in the driver's seat. It's pretty cool. It's not happening in 2020. It's happening today. Let's have a look. no one in the front seats. Waymo team members chose three separate destinations, pressed the start button in the car, and the vehicle did all the rest, choosing what route to take, when to turn, when to yield, and everything in between. That's full, true autonomy. And if that ride looked ordinary to you, then we're one step closer to our ultimate goal, to make the extraordinary completely ordinary. We want the experience of traveling with Waymo to be routine so that you want to use our driver for your everyday needs. And this wasn't just one, a, a one-time ride or just a demo. What you're seeing now marks the start of a new phase for Waymo and for the history of this technology. We're test driving these fully self-driving vehicles in a part of the Phoenix metro area in Arizona. Over time, we'll expand to cover the entire Phoenix region an area much larger than Greater London. And our ultimate goal is to bring our fully self-driving technology to more cities in the US and around the world. Fully self-driving cars are here. Now, the question you may be wondering, how soon can we all get a ride? Well, in the next few months, members of the public will get to experience these fully self-driving rides too. The first passengers will be people who are part of our early rider program, which is a public trial already underway in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, since the beginning of this year, our early riders have been using our fleet with a test driver at the wheel to go to work, school, soccer practice, and more. Soon, they'll be able to make these trips in a fully self-driving car with Waymo as their chauffeur. So how did we get here? How did we get to a point where we were ready to take the driver out from behind the wheel? Well, there is a driver, Waymo, and Waymo needs to be capable, reliable, and safe. And this takes time and experience. First, we needed a vehicle that was well-suited for our needs. Fiat Chrysler had just the thing for us, the Chrysler Pacifica you see on stage with me. It's a plug-in hybrid minivan with power sliding doors and a top safety rating. 
We outfitted our cars with an array of hardware, including a powerful AI compute platform, along with lasers, camera, and radar. We developed these entirely in-house. And this is the most advanced vehicle that we've developed to date. Everything in it, everything, is designed and built for full autonomy. Our combination of powerful sensors gives our vehicles a 360-degree view of the world. The lasers can see objects in three dimensions up to 300 meters away. We also have short-range lasers that stay focused on things close to the car. And our radars can see underneath and around vehicles, even tracking moving objects hidden from the human eye. And we have high-resolution vision systems that allow our vehicles to see in a wide variety of lighting conditions, ranging from an unlit parking lot in the middle of the night to the blazing sun at sunset. And with our hardware engineers working side by side with our software team and our AI experts at Waymo, we're able to design everything to work together seamlessly. So those are some of the things you can see. But there are also some that you can't, which are critical to a fully self-driving vehicle. Now, to have a car on public roads without a person at the wheel, we built in some unique safety features. For example, our system runs thousands of checks on itself every second. With these checks, our systems can instantly diagnose any problem and pull over to a safe stop if needed. Now, for more critical driving functions, we go a step beyond that and add in secondary systems. Today, all of our minivans have backups for steering, for braking, computing, and power. We then take all of this technology through what we'd like to think is the world's longest, toughest, ongoing driving test. In the last eight years, Waymo's vehicles have driven more than five and a half million autonomous kilometers on public roads. And that's across more than 20 cities. It's about 140 times around the globe. We've also practiced rare and unusual situations we might encounter on our private test track. A mock city, really, complete with traffic lights, railway crossings, roundabouts, and high-speed roads. We've created more than 20,000 scenarios there for our vehicles to practice. And that includes everything from blowing stacks of paper at our vehicle sensors to having people jump out of a box in surprise at our cars. Finally, we built a virtual world where our vehicles can redrive and practice every mile we've ever driven. In our simulator, we have the equivalent of 25,000 vehicles driving these virtual streets every hour of every day, focused on the most complex and challenging parts of driving. In the last 12 months alone, we've completed over 4 billion kilometers of virtual driving. We continue to pick up experience at a rapid pace. Right now, we're driving about 16,000 kilometers every day on public roads and driving another 16 million kilometers each day in simulation. It's a lot of driving. We go through all these efforts because we know that experience is absolutely the best teacher. And we're out to make Waymo the most experienced driver on the road today. Now, let me show you a bit of how our vehicles see the world. On the bottom here, you see a camera view, similar to what you or I would see while driving on the road. And in the main view, you'll see how the car sees the world. You can see our sensors are tracking and recognizing every object around the vehicle. Now, for each road user, our technology is able to make predictions about their movements in the future, just like a human would. Except that while a person may only be able to do this for a handful of objects in front of them, we can do this for literally hundreds of objects simultaneously all around us. Now, in the video you just watched a few minutes ago, the fact that we could operate on public roads without a human driver means we have to be ready to safely handle everything that could happen, even rare and unusual situations that you might only come across once or twice in a lifetime of driving. Now, the good news is all of our experience means we're prepared for this, too. In this first example we'll show you, our vehicle is going around a blind curve onto another road. We quickly detect a person walking on the road and move over. Here, a dog runs onto the road, and its owner runs after it. We're able to detect both quickly enough to slow down. 
Finally, this is literally a joke come to life. So why did the chicken cross the road? Apparently, it was really just to get to the other side. Our vehicles may not have a very good sense of humor, but they did see the chickens, and they slowed down. So look, for the last 100 years, vehicles have largely stayed the same. You open the front door, you get into the driver's seat, start the car, step on the accelerator, and go. But the way we people use fully self-driving cars, we think, will be fundamentally different. Our role will shift from a driver to that of a full-time passenger who isn't responsible for any part of driving. Now, this means we have to create new customs and norms for how passengers interact with a car that drives itself. Now, when you're a passenger in a car driven by a human, there's a lot of communication that happens between you and the driver. Some of it's verbal, some of it's nonverbal. Now, in a fully self-driving car, we've got to find a way to build trust between riders and our technology. And one way we're doing this is through our in-car screens. Here, we've thought through the details, like what type of information to show and how to show it. The goal is to share what the vehicle is seeing and thinking without overloading riders with too much information. And it begins with curating all the types of information and objects we display, as well as how and when to highlight them. So here's an example in this frame. You can see a few features. We highlight pedestrians and cyclists and render them using the actual laser points so you can see their arms and legs move. You'll notice that cyclists have a blue color under them, while pedestrians have a white one. This subtle color difference communicates to passengers that our vehicle can distinguish between the two. That's comforting. It's not just about what the vehicle is seeing. We also want to communicate what the car is thinking and doing. So here, a passenger in the back seat may wonder why their vehicle is stopped, even though they think they have the right of way. So what we do in this case is highlight the crosswalk to tell the passengers that there's a pedestrian crossing, and we display a message that we're yielding for them. No problem. This kind of communication is crucial, because when people feel confident and comfortable in a fully self-driving vehicle, more and more of us will want to use them in our daily lives. And with more fully self-driving cars on the road, the way we think about mobility and transportation can then fundamentally change, too. Think about this for a minute. Today, personal cars are often the second largest purchase we make in our lives after a home. And once we buy a vehicle, that's the one we have to use every day, day in and day out. That means people may buy a large SUV for the one day of the year they hope to take the car off-road, but the other 364 days, they're the sole occupant in a big eight-seat vehicle, traveling an hour to work each way, wasting fuel, space, and creating CO2 and pollution. Not only is that car not suited to most of its usage, it's also sitting idle, on average, 95% of the time. Think of that waste. That's like pouring out five liters of water for every glass that you drink. It's sort of crazy. And here's a staggering statistic. At least in the US, 60% of all car trips are less than two kilometers long. Now, with each car being driven so little, and for what are mostly short trips, Waymo's technology allows vehicles to be used in a different way. A small fleet of fully self-driving cars could serve an entire community. And there are other benefits, too. Parking lots could be transformed into parks. Fewer traffic crashes could ease congestion. This technology can unlock the full potential of shared mobility. Which brings me to what we're working on now. With Waymo in the driver's seat, we can reimagine many different types of transportation, from ride hailing and logistics to public transportation and personal vehicles, too. Think of our technology as a platform that can enable many different applications. Now, because we see so much potential in shared mobility, the first way people will get to experience fully self-driving technology will be in Waymo driverless service. 
We're now working on making this commercial service available to the public. People get to use our fleet of on-demand vehicles to do anything from commute to work, get home from a night out, run errands, whatever they like. Getting access will be as easy as using an app. You just tap a button, and Waymo will come to get you and take you where you want to go. The vehicles will be fully self-driving, so you have your own personal space where you can sit back and relax. And it makes sense that we would start by giving people access to our fleet. This will make Waymo available to more people in a more cost-effective way. And for us, having more people experience fully self-driving vehicles early is valuable. It will let us learn about how people want to use this technology, and those insights will inform our future work. In the long term, Waymo could take you on all kinds of trips. Because you're accessing vehicles rather than owning them, in the future, you could have access to an entire fleet of vehicle choices, each one tailored to the trip you want to take. You can reimagine the very idea of what a vehicle is, because they no longer have to be designed around the driver as the primary user. They can instead be designed for specific purposes and tasks that better suit our needs as riders and as users. There might be a design that's great for napping, might be one that's perfect as a personal dining room, one as a mobile office, or even one just for those times you're moving into a new place. You can even have that eight-seat SUV for your weekend trips if you like. And you can take these vehicles for one ride, for a day, for a week, or even longer. But it all starts with those first fully self-driving vehicles. What you saw today is a big step forward to achieving our ultimate goal, safer roads and better access to transportation for everyone. With the world's first fleet of fully self-driving vehicles now test driving on public roads, this is a future we can all begin to imagine. Thanks, everybody.